Hey guys, it's another Fusion 360 update. Let's check it out. After the update, you'll immediately be aware of one thing we're thrilled about, our UI improvements. If you haven't seen Kaching's video on that, check it now, but I'll note a couple highlights. I find the neutral color palette easy on the eyes, and the new icons reduce clutter. This helps regain that invaluable model viewing space the last UI update encroached upon. We've also improved tabbed interactions by adding tooltips, improved overflow handling, and when you save a design, the icon in the document tab will reflect when saving and save. Another area where the UI was improved was generative design. Here, you'll find entirely new toolbar icons while exploring and viewing results. This effort helps make the generative design experience more fluid with the rest of the Fusion workspaces. On the modeling side of things, the next time you're in the whole command, you'll notice we've added tapered taps. This enables a wide variety of thread types including NPT and NPT4 PVC, which I'll use on this filter. Do note that right now these threads are only cosmetic, but adding modeled versions is definitely part of the plan. With that, we've also added tapered hole support in 2D drawings. After a quick update of this model, you'll see tapered threads in those side and front views. And, based on popular demand, we've reintroduced the ability to select faces or features in the fillet command, as denoted by this handy tooltip. Remember to take advantage of that long click select other tool to assist with this, because it does still have a proclivity for edges. The next time you're wanting to mirror entities while sketching, make sure to use our newfound ability to mirror about model edges. I can't tell you how many times I've painstakingly selected hundreds of objects only to find I forgot to create something to mirror about. But now you can just select an edge and you're done. And while you're at it, go ahead and use those axes too. When you use offset, you'll find you're no longer stuck with keeping that dimension between the offset and offsetee. Now you can move and place these with far more flexibility than before. And, based on your feedback, we've added the option to show or hide all sketch dimensions while sketching. This will help those complex sketches stay organized and easy to navigate. Find it in the sketch palette. That's all for me. Let's flip it over to Bryce. Thanks, Aaron. I'm super excited to announce the new Sheet Metal Bend tool, which I've been waiting for since we introduced Sheet Metal functionality in Fusion 360 almost two years ago. First, I'm going to follow rule number one by creating a new component first. This will allow me to create a sheet metal component and select the sheet metal rules for this design. In this case, I have a legacy 2D DXF that I would like to start to convert into a folded sheet metal design. Make sure to choose to insert the DXF with this workflow. Previously, I would have had to start this from scratch and model this with the flange tool. But now with this new bend tool, we can easily convert this into a folded sheet metal design. This will allow us to change the units of the DXF and specify which DXF layers to keep. In this workflow, we do not need the bend extent, so let's turn those off. First, we will use the flange tool to create a base flange of the entire sheet metal design. Watch out, the sketch turned off automatically after we used it for the first feature. So let's locate the sketch and hit the light bulb to turn it back on. Once we have the flattened representation of our part, we can start bending our sheet metal flanges. Let's activate our new bend tool. First, we will have to select the stationary face. This is important to describe which way our component will start bending. We will click on one side of this bend to keep it stationary. Then we will select the bend line. Now here's the best practice for this workflow. Start with the furthest most bends and work your way into your main piece of your sheet metal design. Notice in this case, I did not do the best practice I just mentioned. This bends the sheet metal part away from my initial sketch that I would like to use as my bend line. Don't worry, you can always roll back before the previous bend, then add your bend correctly, then roll the timeline forward to ensure your part is bent correctly. Now let's speed this up and bend these next couple flanges pretty quickly by using the same workflow and flipping the direction of the flange to get your desired result. Finally, let's start working on these last two flanges in the middle. Again, using the same technique starting with the further portion of the flange, we can start to adjust the bend angle and direction to get our desired result of a 60 degree jog of this flange. Either use the rotation ring or type in the bend angle to get the desired result. If you require, you can always change the bend line position and override the bend rules to get just about any result. Well, that is the bend tool perfect for converting flat DXFs into folded sheet metal components but don't be afraid to use this new functionality in a variety of sheet metal workflows.
So you guys might notice we are outside today. That's because our team actually did a big move down to our Pier 9 facility where we have a full CNC and metal workshop. So we're really excited to make things and share them with you. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Heading over to the manufacturer workspace, there are improvements across several operations that I think will help make a big productivity difference. First off, when creating a setup, Fusion used to select every body in the workspace as the model, even things like vices and other work holding. Now, in multi-body assemblies, there is nothing selected by default, so you have more control over the model definition. Next up in the face operation, we added even step-downs, which you might recognize from other toolpaths like 2D Contour and 2D Pocket. Instead of several passes at the programmed depth of cut, and then one with whatever is left, even step-downs divides the total depth into however many steps it takes while respecting the maximum step-down. Next, we added select same diameter to pretty much all the toolpaths that are used for circular faces, including circular, bore, and thread. This will work on both holes and bosses, and will make it much easier to select all those features at once, saving you those valuable clicks. In the thread operation specifically, there are instances when you need to time threads at the right start angle for them to interface properly, so we also added the ability to change the start angle of the thread. The angle is relative to the negative x direction and moves counterclockwise around the face. Last but certainly not least, there's a new option in the stock display. Under colorization, stock compare will color the model green for areas that are within the specified tolerance, blue for areas with remaining stock, and red for areas that violate or gouge the model. In this example, the chamfers I added were not modeled, so I'm getting a red mark where it violates the model. I also missed a bunch of finishing passes, so now I know to go back and add those operations to remove that remaining blue stock. Make sure to come back every Tuesday and Thursday. We have live streams at one o'clock Mountain Time featuring Brad Talis, special featured guest. Yeah, I know. I've been watching them and it's been taking my Fusion 360 to the next level. But we're also introducing something this year called Fusion 360 Academy. It's this new event we're going to hold in August, one in Portland and one in Japan. Make sure to check it out. You're going to see more information coming up. But right now, we have the call for proposals. Look in the link to submit a class. That's all we got for you. Hope to see you at Fusion Academy. Until next time.